Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jake Kerr. I would like to welcome you to the 72nd episode of the Black Ink Podcast. Today and every other day that you watch this podcast, I will be your host. I would like to thank you for joining me today. Now, today's podcast, I am absolutely fucking confused. And look, I know I know what you're thinking, Jake. You're all sweaty. You look like you're fucking hot and bothered. And I am. I've just come home from a push bike ride. It's about... Uh, what, 8.30 in the morning? Well, that clock runs fast, so it's about quarter past eight in the morning. And of course, I've done my standard three hours of engaging and posting on social media. I've read my book for an hour. I've done a little bit of meditation. I've said my prayers. I've done my exercise. And on top of that, I've had some social interactions, which always lead me to thinking and asking these questions that I feel like everybody has in the back of their mind, but they forget to ask themselves. So, Let me tell you what happened, the questions that I asked, and how I got to this point where I'm telling you about it. So, on my push bike ride, the plan was to do three hill sprints with some medium efforts in between, just to, you know, keep myself honest, maybe get rid of this little bit of a, you know, I I wouldn't call it a tire, but it's more like a push bike tire. It's not a car tire, but it's it's a tire. It's there, you know what I mean? And now I've been invited to a New Year's Eve party that has a fucking pool involved. You know your boy's going to be fucking starving himself and going on some serious exercise expeditions to get myself looking, not even like, at this point, it's so close, I can't build any muscle, I just got to get rid of the fat that I've got on me, and when you're a fucking full-time stoner, do you know how hard this shit is, I'm literally constantly got the munchies, and I'm trying to lose weight at this minute, crazy, so, I thought, fuck it, I'll get on my push bike, and normally, this is what I do, normally I'll do all of my stuff, and then I'll finish with exercise, and I know what you're thinking, like, start with exercise, get the hardest part out of the way, well, this is how I would think about it anyway, start with the hardest part, get that out of the way, and then work your way back. Unfortunately, if I were to do this, I would have to wake up at 2.30 in the morning, get my exercise done, and then start my social media engagement at 3.30, 4 o'clock. Because regardless of what you do, I have like regardless of what I do, sorry, I have to get that part of the morning locked in and just doing shit on social media because that's what helps me the most with my audience and my algorithm. So, unfortunately, what I do instead is I... I actually, I'll like do all my social media engagement. I read my book. I say my prayers. I do my, my um, stretching and hydrating. Then I have my breakfast. Then I go do my exercise. Then I'll have a shower. And then I start the day. And normally that's about, you know, I mean, interchange uh, exercising with a podcast or sometimes I do both like today. So normally the day starts for me around about nine o'clock in the morning. But instead, I thought what I do is as soon as I fucking finish reading my book this morning, I got on my bike, I got my helmet on, I put on a good album and I set off. And I said to myself, right, today's getting, uh, today Louie is getting a haircut, so I'm going to get her a bone, because I like to get her a bone on the day she gets a haircut, because she, she gets in there and she gets messy, and she gets blood and muscle and grizzle and shit all through her beard and all that. So usually we only give her a bone 24 hours before her haircut, so that way she can get as filthy messy as she wants. She goes and has a bath, has a haircut, and comes back smelling like a fucking end of a rainbow. It's beautiful. So I thought I'll go and get her a bone as well on this ride at the end of it, and that'll be a nice little warm down for me, you know? So, I give myself, you know, a couple of bucks in my back pocket so I had that so I can go buy her a bone. And it's funny because I went, I, I wanted to go to Park Centre, the DBC there, the Dardanut Butchering Company outlet in Park Centre, which is a beautiful little, uh, a beautiful little um, butch, butchers, butchery, whatever you call it. I remember going there with my mum, oh, it would have to be like over 15 years ago. So, they've been there forever and a day and the staff are pretty consistent in there. And I actually always get the same young bloke in there. He's like a... He, he would be probably a couple of years younger than me. He's got a bit of... He's got the kind of like that bikey cut where it's like a mullet, but then short, short at the front. Real good dude. Dude, him and I have, have never even spoken a conversation to each other. But just with like how polite he is or, you know, he, the general vibe that I get off him, that small interaction that you have when you transact over, you know, I'm giving him money and he's giving me a product. I can tell he's just one of us. He's a good, he's a good person, you know what I mean? He knows what he's there to do. He does the job. He does nothing more. He does nothing less. And that's all I ask of him. But today i'm doing it again for fuck's sake i just realized i'm about to out someone and what business they work in i literally just outlined which fucking work like workplace they work in anyway dude if you're listening to this it's on you you know what i mean so i go there and i was like hey man like and like this is the thing i fucking get it i went to the first butchers which is like a nice open air butchers where i could kind of take my bike right up to the counter and say like oh have you got raw raw because i don't want to leave my bike somewhere where i can't see it even though it's seven o'clock in the morning because at the end of the day regardless of if i think someone can steal my push bike i don't want to have to walk home so i'm not going to take the risk as to whether i think there's someone out there that's going to steal my bike at this time in the morning you know, weighing up whether I can leave it out the front and it'll be all good. Dude, I'm a good person, okay? And if I saw my push bike out the front of somewhere with no one around it at seven o'clock in the morning, 
I would take it, okay? Purely out of principle that you shouldn't leave a nice looking bike unassisted ever, right? If you're in a public space, that's the public's property if you're not standing with it. You have to think like that. Like I understand you only get in the world what you're looking for, but at the same time, if you're negligent, you're gonna be treated like a fucking idiot, you know? So the second place that I go to, I have to, which is obviously Park Center, I have to take my push bike into the shopping center, which if you know Park Center is, it is what it is. Anyway, so I took my push bike in there. I walk up to the thing. I see where the bones are that I always get for it because I actually normally do go to DBC. But the reason I didn't go to DBC today is because they're inside a shopping center and I had my push bike and I didn't have a bike lock and I wasn't going to take a bike lock considering the only thing I was taking with me was like a phone, you know, AirPods and like six bucks in dollar coins and a key to get into my house. I'm not going to carry around a three kilo lock that I would need a belt to carry. You know what I mean? Like just seems fucking pointless. So anyway, I go in there, I see the bones and they're about yay big. And every time I go in there, I say, oh, can I get one of those bones? And can you cut it in? Like, if you imagine what, what, uh, say this is the bone, right? I always get it cut down like horizontally so that I get two kind of, how would you call it? It's like, two reasonable serves of the bone. And also like, if you're just listening to this, it's cutting the bone in a way that all of the marrow is exposed, okay? So there's only two ways you can cut it, like horizontally and vertically. If you cut it vertically, you only get one kind of like section of marrow that you'd be able to suck all the rest out of. But essentially, like what I'm going for is the horizontal cut where you where all the marrow in the bone is exposed. And the reason that I do this is because my dog is quite small. So you might say that I have this particular request because there is a purpose behind it, okay? So I go up to the man and I say, hey, like, are they are they the pet bones, are they? And he's like, yeah, yeah, they're the pet bones. I said, sweet, can I get one of those cut in half? He's like, yeah, they're, they're, um, they're 250. And I was like, cool, so can I get just, sorry, can I just get half of one of those? And just for the record, I don't even remember if the dude that I was talking about before, the, the cool young guy, the one who always serves me, I don't remember if he's ever given me half, but I do remember that he cuts them in half. So he's maybe given me two halves before, but the point is, is that the bone is cut in half, okay? So I say to him like, oh, can you know, again, like, oh no, can I just get half of one? Is that possible? He goes, oh, I can, I can sell you a whole one. I was like, cool, cool, cool. And he goes, yeah, so they're 250. I said, okay can you cut it in half? And he goes, oh, I can cut it that way. And you know what? At this point, at this point, I think to myself, well, fuck me, okay? Fuck me. Because you know that this dude's talking about cutting it in half vertically, which is literally the opposite of what I want. But you know what? I'm not even the customer at this point. Because if I was the customer, I would be right. Why? Because the customer is always right. But at this point, I'm not right, so I mustn't be the customer. I must be a fuckhead to this guy. I must be a fucking, a, just a, a diligent, just wandering around in the abyss, bumping into things fuckhead, because I must be just coming up with these things out of nowhere and asking him who does this all the time as a fucking job, and he is responding with confusion. He's like, well, that's not something that's within my bandwidth. That's not something that I've done before. That's not something that I think is possible. So I'm like, all good, bro. How's about just sell me the fucking bone for $2.50, cut in half, however the fuck you want to do it, just make it happen. You know what I mean? And I'm like, dude, this is the thing. Like, I, I'm acting right now like I get upset. I get upset about these things after the fact. In the moment, I'm not a smart ass. I'm a nice guy. So I go along with the flow because the thing is I'm trying to avoid conflict at any fucking point possible. So when it comes to these little things like, oh, well, I can cut it this way, I don't go, well, the young bloke who I normally get, he can cut it horizontally. So maybe you can go and ask him how he manipulates his fingers to do that particular task with the bands or whatever the fuck you use and you can figure it out. Instead, what I do is I say, okay, cut it in half then. So he goes off, he cuts it in half, you know, I look away and I'm just thinking to myself like, cool, you know what I mean? Like I'm gonna spend $2.50 whether I get the job done right or whether I get the job done wrong. So let's just spend the $2.50, get the fuck out of here and go give Louie her bone, okay? So I give the motherfucker $3 and I say, that's all you. And then when he like, dude, this is the thing. Like I gave him the $3, I was like, that's all you man. And he looks at it, he goes, like you can, he, you can tell he's like thinking like, oh, you've given me too much money. I need to give you um three dollars, take two dollars fifty. That fucking 
that you know that sound that your modem used to make when it was signing up to the internet you just hear that sound going on in the background and like fucking monkeys clapping cymbals together and shit and he's just like 50 cents oh, I'm 50 cents I just had to walk away before I had to correct him with the fact that I was giving him the change hey all good bro you got a tip for literally not doing your job right that's what just happened that's what just happened so anyway I get the bone I fucking, of course, it's not at all wrapped. He just puts like a, a, a frozen bone that he cut in half inside a paper bag. And I'm obviously on a push bike. So now I get to go home with this defrosting bone that has nothing holding in the moisture inside of a paper bag with no fucking backpack. Do you understand the stupidity of what you've done? All you had to do, all you had to do was look at the cunt in front of you wearing a fucking push bike helmet and Oakley jawbreaker glasses. Look slightly beyond that person and see the push bike in the background that he's lent up against the shop behind him and put two and two together, make four, realize that the cunt's riding a push bike and maybe facilitate the sort of thing that he needs to be able to get that bone home without it falling through the paper bag. But you know what, dude? It's all fucking good. You got my $3, so who gives a fuck about what I got to go through in the next 15 minutes go back to the job that you obviously don't give a fuck about doing right i'm sorry i'm getting heated here but it's real simple it's real fucking simple whether i'm spending a thousand dollars or two dollars on meat your job is to facilitate my needs right i'm giving you permission to be excellent in this moment and instead you're taking the liberty to be shit and that's all good but again I know that you don't wipe your ass properly. I know that you don't give a fuck about your dog. I know you don't, you don't give a fuck about your job. That's what this is about. I'm not attacking you personally if you're listening to this homeboy. What I'm saying is to everyone out there who has a job, whether it's screen printing shirts, whether it's cutting bones in half, whether it's driving a truck, whether it's fucking looking after people, whatever it might be, you have permission at every moment to do a fucking good job at it. And you can be proud of it. But instead, he just was looking for the the fucking easiest answer to whatever the question was. The easiest answer, the one with absolutely no fucking pushback, the one with no resistance, the one like, oh, well, it's really hard to fucking get this thing that's only that big and cut it in half, but I can turn it and just go and cut it that way and it's heaps easier, so I'll just do that instead. Okay, bro, okay. You know what, man? You know what? I'm coming into this with enough energy, heat, and intelligence that I can actually see how your job is done and without any experience, I can understand how you're taking the easy route here, okay? That's what's annoying about this. Hell, if you were in some sort of trade where I had no idea what you do, where I couldn't pull apart the fucking, the actions or the processes that you do and realize like, oh, if you do this, it might be a bit of whatever it is, then you've got the fucking permission to do whatever you want. But when it comes down to a $2.50 bone that I literally could cut in half the way I want it myself with fuck all training, then bro, what are we doing? Why just start my Monday like that? Dude, I'm not even upset. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed, bro. What's that about? It's all good. So then, so then, right? I'm riding, I'm, I'm riding home, okay? And at this point, I can't carry the bag like you would at the top of the bag with the goods in the bottom of the bag. Just imagine any time you've ever carried a bag before. That's what I'm talking about, okay? So I can't carry the bag like this because it's a paper bag and it's got wet shit inside. You know, remember the bones, they're inside the paper bag. So at this point, they're starting to work their way out. And of course, I'm riding a single speed push bike with only a front brake and one spare hand trying to listen to music with my feet strapped into my pedals. And you know what? Hey, it's not hard because I'm super talented. It's all good. It's all good. So everything's going fine. I'm manipulating the traffic. I'm navigating my way through through all the fucking, you know, highs and lows and all the shit I got to get to go home. And then up ahead of me, I see these two women walking towards me. These two, these two women, they're probably in their late 60s, early 70s. You know, they're all doled up. The sort of women you can smell them before you can see them because they got so much fucking perfumes and bullshit and moisturizer and fucking talcum powder and shit on that the wind's collecting it and carrying it towards you, you know? And you're like... Mmm, collectively these women are 180 years old, okay? There's only two of them. All good, all good. So I think to myself, with their collective 180 years of experience on this earth, they would go, hey, look up ahead of us. There is a cyclist, okay? Now, the cyclist is on the footpath where he belongs, okay? So we can't even say, oh, he should be on the fucking footpath or he should be on the road. No, 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 no. I'm exactly where I belong, okay? And I'm coming towards you. And we live in Australia. 
And in Australia, everyone, anywhere, in any situation, when there is traffic, travels on the left-hand side of the road. So what do I do? I establish where I'm gonna be on the road very early whenever I have these situations because I like to communicate with my actions in these scenarios so that people can then go, right, he's sticking to that side, we can stick to this side, okay? So then I stick to the left-hand side and it's one of those bullshit paths. It's not one of the new school paths that's been built in the last 10 years that's fucking this wide and has all the room in the world. It's one of those paths where it's like maybe, maybe on a good day if they were both fucking fully minded going into the situation, you might be able to have two cyclists go past each other and either of them have to go off the path but unlikely, that's on a good day. The other six days of the week, one of them has to get off the path, okay? So these two fucking witches are walking towards me, probably lovely ladies, somebody's grandmother, I don't give a fuck about them at this point, are walking towards me still. So I think, hey, all good, you can see that I'm on my side of the road, but if you continue on your trajectory, then I'm gonna have to get off the road, so that, sorry, the path, so that you can continue being on the path. Now, just doing some quick mathematics, just doing some quick Googling, hang on, just wait, let me see. Oh yeah, so it says here that bikes have wheels that need to stay on a path, and hang on, just wait. Wait, carry the one. Oh, okay, so when you're walking and you have shoes on, you can just walk on the grass and it doesn't change anything for you. Okay, just one, one more equation. Oh, yep. Oh, hang on, carry the... Oh, so as it turns out, it's easier for the push bike to stay on the path and heaps easier for you just to walk on the grass so he can stay on the path. But what do they do? What do they do? That's right. They take up most of the property on the path. And so I'm thinking, that's all good. Maybe at the last minute, they're going to move out of my way. (laughs) You stupid boy. Okay? You stupid boy. 180 years on this earth means they have earned the right to stay on the hard stand. Okay? They have earned the respect they need to stay on that path and not be questioned by any cuck cyclist like me as to why they haven't got off it, even though I'm the one on a push bike. So if you're fucking struggling to understand what happened, they stayed wholly and solely on the footpath while I got to take my bike with skinny tires, strapped in, holding a bag, hold with one brake, all the bullshit, listening to chilling it, I had to get onto the fucking grass, slow right down, you know, just so that they can stay on the path. It makes me wonder, like truly, truly makes me wonder, okay? If you're under like, say 55 years of age, I get it, you're scrambled, okay? We're all scrambled under 55 years of age because you've got fucking Facebook telling you one thing, you've got your neighbors telling you telling you another thing, you've got your workmates bullshitting on about some, some shit that doesn't care, you come home, you try to get a break from it, your kids come in and they're rabbiting on about some NFT or some fucking Ariana Grande shit that you have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. We're all scrambled. None of us have time to relax anymore. And then when we do relax, the first thing we do is we pull out a social media and we get even more scrambled. I get it. I get it. But if you're 80, if you're 80, you are in the generation of respect. You're in the generation of self-awareness. You're in the generation of knowing better. So when you stay on the footpath, you get me blood red fucking mad that you shouldn't be there because the cyclists, because push bike, because wheels, okay? Because there's resistance on the grass and there isn't on the concrete. And me saying this all out aloud I have to treat you like an idiot because you're doing idiot things. Because you had the tendencies of an idiot. Because if I looked, if I wrote down the actions that you're doing, well, there's a definition of an idiot. Okay? So, don't be an idiot. Okay? Maybe this is a lesson for you. Maybe you're not an old lady, but maybe, in fact, you've been on a path before. And this, dude, I, fuck, I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? You know, I'm acting like they did this maliciously as if they wanted me to go off the path for some reason. Okay? I get it. You know, look at me. I look like I'm all stressed out. I've got that cokehead energy. It's not what happens. Okay? What, what actually happened was these two women were walking along and one of them kind of like tried to like edge their way over a little bit and the other woman didn't quite pick up on it because she was too busy fucking balls deep in some conversation about bullshit that doesn't matter and then she looked up and also saw there was a cyclist coming and then looked across to her friend who had already kind of shoved over but had had a failed attempt and because that failed attempt wasn't trying anymore so then the original woman was like oh no well I guess I don't have to move at all well I guess we're both just staying here and let this cunt figure it out for himself that's how it happens it's a new normal human thing it's all good it's all good It's all good. I love you guys. Okay. I love you guys. That's what it's about. Okay. These old women, they just, they were just on a morning walk. Okay. And they didn't realize that they were going to be like one of the topics in some fucking rambling 
idiots podcast who has 16 listeners who most of them probably don't even understand what I'm talking about. It's all good, you know? It's just where I'm at. So I get 200 meters up the road. And there's this guy, right? There's this guy. He's like a he's like a contractor or something. And you know, I get it. Monday morning, seven thirty, contractor pulling up at someone's house. It's already hard enough if you have some sort of business where you have to deal with the public. Trust me, I know. Not complaining. Just saying, people have interesting demands. So he's getting shit out of his work van, all right. And I, I see him, and he's in the perfect scenario that an accident could happen where he's going to get in my way either by himself or with you know carrying something or whatever it might be. And I'll hit him and everyone will fucking go ass over tit. And I get it. It'd be one of those things where it's nobody's fault because no one actually did anything directly wrong. So I thought, you know what? Going to use my initiative here. Going to ring my bell a couple of times and let him know that I'm there. So as he's like, he's got that momentum where he's about to swing out of the van. I've hit the bell. Ding, 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 ding. And he's like kind of stopped and looked and then rolled his eyes. And then I thought, you know what, cunt? I could have just hit you. I could have just ran into you instead. Right? And then if I had ran into you instead... You'd be fucking sitting there in half an hour's time with your busted up whatever saying, oh, I wish you had a rung his bell rolling your eyes. Like some cunts, you just can't get it right. And then it makes me wonder like, bro, bro, am I, am I just a cunt? Like maybe the bone thing of the butcher, maybe he's right. Maybe the young bloke shouldn't have been cutting it that other way the whole time. Maybe there's too much risk and you can almost cut your fingers off. I don't, I don't fucking know. I'm not a butcher pretending like I know anything about cutting bones in half. I barely know how to record a good podcast, let alone cut bones in half. And maybe those women had every right. Maybe with their 180 years versus my 29 years on this earth gives them the right to stand in the path. Maybe just for the simple fact that they are that old and their form of exercise is going and walking and just getting some movement kind of means that they don't have that, uh, what, what do you call it? They don't have the, uh, the fucking agility to move off the path in time. And therefore they look at me and go, this young wild whippersnapper will handle the grass piece of piss. Look at him balancing. He's got one hand on the handlebars. He's holding something in his other hand. He's listening to music at the same time. He's got on some bright glasses and they're probably boasting. We go, look at this young bloke and his big thick legs and his nice bubbly ass. I bet you he's got that all under control. And then this bloke here that I'm talking about, the contractor who fucking rolled his eyes, Dude, he probably had some blowout with his missus that he met on Tinder three weeks ago. And she's telling him, oh, you got to fucking commit to me. You got to change his status on Facebook. And And then he pulls up at work. He gets to the job. He's just about to get all the shit out. And all of a sudden, some kind of a push bike is ringing his bell with his bright Larry glasses going, hey, bro. And then he goes, oh, fucking here we go. It just doesn't stop. Dude, it's hard to know what's going on in this life at any point. It's hard to know if we're ever right or if we're ever wrong. And the fuck part about all of that was in the moments that I got riding home after those three things happened in the space of like five minutes, in the minutes that I got when I was riding home and I was going over all these things. And by the way, this isn't even what I want to talk about on this podcast. This is just what just happened. All right. I considered to myself like I could have been them in any of those situations. I could have been him behind the counter at the butcher first thing on a Monday morning dealing with some fucking weirdo who brought his push bike into the shopping center. I could have been those old women and I could be one of those old women in 60 years time or fucking whatever the maths is. And I could be that contractor who's getting his shit out, getting ready to start his Monday morning, probably working for himself, probably giving it a hard go just as I am. But the problem is we only get out of our own perspective. We only get this like, we, we only have, we only know the story that we've been told and we only know the opinions that we have ourselves. It's so hard, it's so hard to get out of that. And realize that everybody is having these experiences and these fucking, they have this whole collection of bullshit that's happening to them in their life that is affecting how they're making these decisions as you see them in front of you. It's super hard to comprehend that. It's super hard to realize that they are as important to themselves as you are to you. I struggle to realize that with Larissa, with my mom, with my dad. So these strangers that I meet on the street that I interact with for these passing fleeting moments, it's so easy to think that they're a fuckhead and that I'm right. But the reality is, is that we're both fuckheads. We're both right and we're both wrong. And if we treat each other like we're brothers and sisters rather than fuckheads, regardless of the result and regardless of the process, the overall is probably going to be better. We're probably just going to get to the end of the day and just be happier. You know? Dude, I want to be angry about these things as much as I want to be fucking thankful and happy for them. And I think that's just a part of growing up. Growing up. You know, I definitely have lost, I mean, I was going to say hours, but I think the reality is days and maybe even weeks to being a cunt.
to letting myself be upset about things that I thought I should be upset about or that I was upset about and even holding grudges for the sake of thinking that that was part of my character. Well, I'm the sort of person who says, nah, fuck it, and then sticks by that, nah, fuck it for the rest of their life. Dude, one of my literal best friends at the moment, I stopped talking to him for two and a half years off a principle that I thought was valid, but as it turns out, was fucking dust. It was nothing. And now we laugh about it. We joke about it. It's stupid. We literally picked right back up where we left off because it was me admitting like, hey man, all the shit that like, you did whatever you did for me to stop talking to you and we all do these fucking stupid things. It is what it is. I've done it to other people. I'm sure you've done it to other people. The person who is in the middle of us, I'm sure they've done it to other people as well. It's regardless. That's human shit. It's how we deal with it. How we deal with our friends, you know? And look, I'm not the best person to be fucking preaching about giving your friends a second chance if they break your heart, if they hurt your feelings. Because I really do, especially now that I've grown older, I I think, okay, now I've got to explain myself. That particular situation, I had to find some repercussion because it was something that you know, I knew deep down in my stomach. I was like, you're not talking to him for your ego, not for the reason. You know what I mean? And then other, other people who I've elected to stop talking to, it's like, no, no, no. Just remember that we got to a point where we had been hurt so many times in so many different ways that we made a logic, logical decision based off this, this, and this reason. And every time I go to talk to them, every time I want to go, you know what, let bygones be bygones. I've licked my wounds. I've, I've recovered. I want to go back and you know, be friends with this person again. It's like, well, just remember that it was this, 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 and this that led to that. So therefore, you're allowed to stick to that. You know, And look, in all honesty, in all honesty, I would still be better off and building that bridge again and being friends with that person again, even if it's not in the same light that it was once before. I'm not talking about anyone specific. I'm talking about those people that I don't talk to anymore that were once friends, if not great friends. Man, have your heart broken. It's all good. Go and fix it. It's all good, you know? But, dude, what was it I even wanted to fucking talk about today? Oh, dude, yeah, this is fucking bullshit. Like... Man, I don't even know what this topic is. It's just like something that's kind of annoying me. And like every time it comes up, I'm just like, are you fucking okay? Like, I don't care. You know what I mean? I just find more and more often and like literally, literally everyone that you talk to has some sort of ailment that can be traced back to nothing and is treated with nothing. You know, these people, oh, I've got ADD. Oh, I've got ADHD. I've got, oh, I've got autism. Oh, I'm fucking on the spectrum. Oh, I've got depression. Oh, I've got anxiety. Oh, I've got dyslexia. Like, okay. So? So? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So now that you've got it, have you got a reason to go take some drugs that you want to take? You know, have you got, like, wh- what is it? What is it? Where, where are we at? You're now at this point that you go, oh, I've got like, okay. So look, I had a friend the other day tell me that he's got ADD and he stopped smoking weed because he's got ADD. Okay. Now, look. Again, to the friend who said that to me, you literally just told me this, you would know if it's you. So if you're watching this, don't take any of this to heart, just, but also listen, okay? So to me, like you say you got ADD and the reason that he stopped smoking weed is because it made him more anxious, right? So, I, okay, okay, let's take a real basic and like, obviously, let, let's, let's start by footnoting all of this with this podcast like all the podcasts that I record, I record it for entertainment purposes only. I make all of this stuff up as I go and none of it is real or based off real life interactions. It's all just for the sake of entertainment. So please don't take anything that I say as advice. Don't take anything that I say as gospel. Just watch it for entertainment purposes. Laugh a little, laugh hell hard. I don't mind. Do whatever you want and maybe tell your friends about it. Maybe share it. Maybe like it. Maybe comment on it. Do whatever you want to do, but for fuck's sake, don't take it seriously, okay? So, because I don't know what I'm talking about. So, he tells me, he goes, yeah, I've got ADD, so I don't smoke as much weed anymore. And now when I smoke weed, it gets me really fucked up. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So, you've got ADD. So, what, you know, what's that like? And he goes, oh, you know, well, I, you know, I struggle to focus. And, you know, I fucking, you know, like I've, you know, sometimes I can't sleep. And then if I smoke weed, you know, it gives me, and like, okay, so... Have you tried exercising? Have you tried cutting out on social media a bit? Have you tried drinking water? Have you tried increasing your diet? What's going like what what's going on with all the all the standards, all the foundation of your life? How's that all looking? Okay? 
Because when you say I stop smoking weed because I have anxiety, oh sorry, because it gives me anxiety because I have ADD, that's like me saying I drive a Ford Ranger because the sky is blue and my mum's name is Marianne, okay? I get it that all of those things exist in the world, but the correlation between them can only be made when you're living in delusion, okay? And yes, I have no doubt that smoking weed does give you more anxiety if you have ADD, okay? But the problem is, is I don't believe that anxiety, the way people blow it up in their mind, the picture that people think anxiety is in their mind, I don't think that exists. I think anxiety is the catalyst to that picture. I think anxiety is something that exists in every single fucking human being. I think anxiety is the thing that stopped us from being eaten by the saber-toothed tiger as it approached behind us and it stepped on a twig and our brain goes, bro, you're about to be fucking eaten. Okay? And I think that anxiety, that feeling inside us of something has to change, I'm worried, I'm scared, I've got to do something, whatever it is, it can be mitigated with exercise. Do you know how much the fucking, the bone thing worried me or the women thing worried me or the, the bloke rolling his eyes thing worried me? A fucking about as much as a shit being in a paper bag. I was just like, cool, on to the next. It's just a little problem, solve it, problem, solve it, problem, solve it. Why? Dude, I just went and ate three fucking hills on my push bike. I didn't stop until I was at the top of them. And then I was at the top of them. My body was telling me, what the fuck did you do? My chest felt like it was too small. My throat felt like it couldn't take in enough oxygen. And then once oxygen was in my lungs, it felt like my lungs couldn't extract the oxygen out of the air that I breathed to give it to the muscles that I need to re replenish, right? This felt like nothing compared to riding those hills. That dude didn't bother me. I don't even remember what he looks like. Those two women on that footpath are going to be out of my mind in 12 hours. I'm not going to be dwelling on it. And every time I ride past that spot on my foot, on, uh, next time I ride past that spot on the footpath, it's not going to concern me that that's where this negative thing happened. I'm out there fucking killing my demons so that the bullshit the society gives me doesn't become them. Right? And then you say you've got ADD. Hey, bro, I can talk for 45 minutes straight about fucking nonsense into a camera to myself and you think you have ADD? Bro, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Go do some exercise, right? Go do some shit. And bro, here's the fun part. Go smoke some weed and enjoy it at the same time. Man, I've gone too far into this one specific example. The point that I'm making is, is that people romanticize these ailments instead of realizing that they're things that people actually suffer from, okay? If you're in the like, hmm, maybe stage, then trust me, you don't have it, okay? Like, I remember when I was young, I fucking had this accent or whatever it was. It came off, and, oh, my finger's really sore, my finger's really sore, and they're like, straighten it. And I was like, ow, like that. And I thought, oh, and they go, what do you think? Oh, I think it's broken. You know what the first thing I got told? Oh, you'd know if it was broken. You'd know. And I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure. Look, look, ah, oh, ow. You'd know if it was broken. A couple years later, I fucking, dude, this is actually, a, this is an interesting story. So I was crossing, um, no, that's right. So what happened was, it's not, oh, fuck, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I, get, I, get, I get it, I get it, I get it, I'm having a conversation in my mind that no one else can hear, and that's fine, that's fine, okay, bro, that might even be ADD, what's that about, huh? So, I was, uh, it was in China, and I was in the, um, I was in World Championships, the fucking marathon, right, and it was funny, because I was skating, it was like a five kilometer track, so it was a massive track, terrible condition, it was hot as fuck, humid as fuck, it was the second last lap, and I was actually doing okay. Like I was kind of like I was in the main pack. And I was skating, 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 duh, 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 and there was this massive crash and this cunt like broke his leg and I saw it happen. I saw this dude break his leg. And that crash weirdly kind of elevated its way up to the front of the pack and there was people falling left, right and center. And as this guy fell, I don't know how it happened. Don't ask me. He's fallen. Bang, something has hit my foot and I've kept on skating. And straight away, I was like, that just broke my toe. My toe just broke, for sure. I can't tell you what toe it is. It's either the second or third one, but it's broken and my, my nail is involved somehow. And of course, given the heat of the moment, world championships, marathon, I'm a marathon skater, nothing was stopping me, but I had that immediate thought like, that just broke, that just broke. So I finished the rest of the race. I think I got some bullshit result. It was like, fuck, what was it? I think I might've got like a top 50 finish or something and like, 
I don't even remember, dude. It was fucking honestly. It was like it was like eleven years ago, almost twelve years ago. So I finished the race. Find all my teammates. We go down. We're taking our skates off, and at this point, I've completely forgot about what happened to my foot because it's a thing in racing, man. Like literally, you have your cock pulled off and just not realize because you got so much adrenaline and you're so fucked. And like that feeling I was talking about at the top of the hill, it's like that times a million because you've just been skating for an hour in 90, 90 fucking percent humidity on a forty degree day on a bullshit track in China where it's all fucking smog and all the rest. And as I've like taken my skate off, I've like, oh, that's right, that dude kicked my foot. And I forgot about the thinking that it's broken thing. And then as I pulled my sock off, I pulled it off like just thinking like, oh, well, it's broken. It's not bleeding. It's all good. As I pulled my sock off, uh, it had bled. The blood had dried. My, my The toenail was involved. And as I pulled my sock off, it's ripped the nail off with it because the nail was already dislodged. And I remember just being like, holy fuck. Fuck, dude, the pain was insane. The pain was different, bro. You know how people say like shit hits different? That hit different, right? And I was like, I immediately went back to that moment where where it was like, hey, if that was broken, you would know about it. I'm like, oh, this is not broken. This is fucked, you know? That applies to all these ailments that people think they have. Like if you actually had ADD or ADHD or whatever the fuck you think you have, you'd know. You'd know by now. If you have got halfway through your 20s and you're holding down a job and you do it, and I know I can I can literally hear people going like, no, but fucking you can have ADD and still have a normal life and rah, rah, rah. You're the fuckhead that I'm talking to. Like, if you've got a normal life and everything's going well, why are you looking for a label? Why are you looking to categorize yourself as someone with something? Because even if you have got the shit, what the fuck does it matter? Again, do you want the drugs that they treat it with? Do you want to be treated differently emotionally? Do you want to be coddled saying like, oh no, you've got ADD. That's why you can't fucking follow your dreams and your goals. Fuck no, dude. Channel it, okay? Channel it. You want the reality? Dude, this is something I talk about every now and then with like the wrist and my mum. And I hate talking about it. I really do. I 100% have dyslexia. 100%. It's something that's getting worse the older that I get. And I found that especially in the past year, since I've like literally just been working for myself, by myself, doing everything like the amount of times that i've got numbers and letters back to front it's fucking it's astounding like i trip i double check and triple check things because i know i have a tendency to reverse things and so much so that i've now created methods in my mind to treat this so i know that if i if say if i've got to you know i've got to remember <clears throat> let's make an example right so there's a number it goes um Four zero two seven eight three one nine. Okay, so you got four zero two seven eight three one nine. Now, say this is a BSB or something, and you've got to go from you know, dude. What's the go when you like send me your bank details and someone sends you a screenshot? It's like cunt. Put it in a message so I can copy and paste it. You fucking moron. All good. So if I have to remember these numbers or if I have to repeat them from here to here. I'll never go 4027-8319 because I know the likelihood of me swapping around any of those numbers is fucking crazy, dude. And my mind doesn't give a fuck about whether the numbers are next to each other or not as well. I'll turn that into like 4720-8931. Like it's fucking bizarre how my mind's... And the crazy part is I thought people with dyslexia putting it on. They're not, dude. Your mind literally records it. As you think you're like taking it off the page, it records it in the wrong order and then you repeat what you think. And the fuck part is your mind thinks that it's correct. So what I'll do in this situation, I'll go 402, 783, 19. Okay. 402, 783, 19. 402, 783, 19. Because I know that those triple, if I put it in threes, it can't go wrong. If I go 40, 27, 83, 19, I can still go like 23, 40, 83, 19. I can still get it back to front. So when it comes to that, I go like, right, if I do it in groups of three and say that number of three, that number of three, and then if there's like one or two left, then you remember what that is, then my likelihood of getting it correct is like 99.9%. So let's look at the structure of what I did. I realized that my mind does something. The program that I'm running, the software that operates all of this shit going on in my head has a small little hiccup in it, right? Now, to treat that software, 
We can go and do all the bullshit. We can tell people about it. We can get professionals involved. We can do this. We can spend money. We can waste time. We can solve a problem that isn't really a problem. We can tell people who don't care about it. We can get them involved. We can use it as an excuse for things. Oh, yeah. So oh, we can bring it up in times when there's ever someone talking about numbers or dyslexia or fucking getting things back to. Fun. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm dyslexic as well. <laughs> like, no. Or you could just go, hey. I seem to get numbers back to front. It only seems to happen in groups of two. What happens if I use groups of three? Hmm, the likelihood of those numbers landing on the page has gone down significantly. Maybe I need to start employing that until it gives me a reason not to. And guess what? You can use this across the board. So my partner is also a carer and is around people with uh, disabilities, obviously a, a great percentage of the time. And I've had multiple conversations with her and my mum and my doctor, actually, about whether or not I might be on the spectrum. Now, look, again, this is a topic where there's going to be people at home screaming, saying, you're not autistic, you're not this, you're not that, I know more, ah, rah, rah, rah. There are things that make a lot of sense if I were on the spectrum. But more importantly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. Not at all. If I take those things, right, so you go, oh, I'm, I'm, I may be on the spectrum. I say that and someone goes, well... Why do you think you might be on the spectrum? And I go, because of this reason, this reason, and this reason, okay? Now, instead of having that conversation with a person who actually doesn't fucking care whether I'm on the spectrum or not, I have the conversation with myself. So, hey, I have this thing and this thing and this thing that is similar to someone on the spectrum or it's similar to the things that they look for when diagnosing someone on the spectrum. And I go, okay, how can I use these things as tools, okay? So, whether it might be, what's a good example? Um... I'm quite, oh, see, this is the thing. Like, I hate even using examples because even, it's like people who say they have OCD. It's the same thing, you know, like, oh, yeah, I've got OCD. No, you don't, cunt. You just like to keep things clean, you know? That's all it is. If you had OCD, you'd be debilitated. You would be stuck doing that one thing. You know what I mean? If you had OCD worth mentioning, I'd know about it. You wouldn't have to tell me, right? That's, that's what all this is about. And the things that make my business successful are like more to do with strategy and like the application of knowledge than it does most of the shit that you see on the front of the store. It's it's so, so much more to do with how you can use these things that perhaps are ailments in other people's eyes or according to the medical fucking industry, whatever you want. It's more being able to go like, okay, I have this weird need to follow jobs through to the very end, okay? So that means that before I take on any jobs, I have to be willing and able to do them to the complete end. I have to be willing and able to not to make myself knowledgeable, knowledgeable about the whole project so much so that I, I'm not gonna get upset about letting myself dive deep into this. And also, when push comes to shove, I'm gonna give myself permission to do absolutely brilliantly at this job. Well, I could spend heaps of time figuring out why I'm that way and whether that has anything to do with being on the spectrum or ADD or all the rest, or I could just do a really fucking good job at what I do. And so I I decide to not talk about it. I decide to put it into action. And it drives me fucking bananas when I find these people in my life saying like, oh, you know, like ever since I found out, ever since I was diagnosed with fill in the blank, I've really been struggling and rah, rah, rah. No, 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 no. You got given an excuse and you ran with it. That's all you did. Because the reality is regardless of whether it's a medical ailment or whether it's fucking bad news or whatever it might be, you're going to be diagnosed with problems your whole life. Your character is defined by how you deal with those problems, not with how you use them as ammo. That's what this is all about. You're meant to rise above. How fun is that? How fun is that idea that you can be given a problem and you can go, right, motherfucker, how are we dealing with this? Not like, oh, ever since I got told that, uh, you know, such and such, I've been just, I've been thinking about it a lot. And, you know, like it makes sense now when I trace, you know, this, this relationship didn't work because I was, you know, and, and also like my jobs haven't been quite so good because, you know, and like, you know, I've been struggling with my diet because, you know, but it's like, nah, man. Nah, man, those things all fell apart for their own individual reasons. And now you've just got a really comfortable answer. And you are, wait for it, you are leaning on it like this. You're leaning on it going like, oh, that's okay. I don't have to try as hard because I'm dyslexic. Well, I, I look, honestly, honestly, I would love to give more effort, but I can't because I'm dyslexic. Mm. 
Dude, fuck dyslexia. Fuck being on the spectrum. Fuck having ADD. Fuck all of it. Smoke weed. Have fun. Do well. Go hard. Be excellent. Be the best you can be. And dude, at the end of the day, we're all just riding our push bike with one hand, trying to hold bones in a bag that's going to fall out. That's what it's all about. Be good to your mum, because I'm fucking out. Yeah!